Live from the San Jose Convention Center, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering Hadoop Summit 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Hortonworks, and by EMC, Pivotal, IBM, Pentaho, Teradata, SyncSort, and by Attunit Wandisco. Now your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Silicon Valley for Hadoop Summit 2015. I'm John Furrier, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. We just had Rob Bearden on, CEO of Hortonworks. A lot of great stuff happening. We got two great guests here, Josh Rogers, president of SyncSort, and Mike Fontaine, national sales director, disruptive solutions at cloud at, at, and big data at Dell. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, John. Josh, Thanks, good John. seeing you again. Good so, to see uh, you. Big data is great for you guys. You guys have been doing amazing yeah. lately. We've been following you guys on Twitter. Yep. Uh, the business performance is great. You got some big news to share yep. with Dell. Let's get yep. right to it. What's going on? Yeah, so we're, uh, we're announcing a joint solution. It's the first and only um, opportunity for customers to uh, get at their hands on a complete solution for uh, data offload for um, data warehouses and ETL. And it's a uh, reference architecture, Dell's technology, Cloudera's technology, SyncSource technology, an end-to-end -end solution from bottom to top uh, for customers to tackle this great use case, which both frees up budget, funds their Hadoop cluster, and populate, populates it with the data that they need. It's a great solution. Mike, yeah, what's, so, what's the Dell impact? So we're really excited because we're, we're really taking a use case-based approach to solving customer problems. So we've we've been in this business for the last seven, eight years. Started with the big web tech terms or firms in Hadoop and solving their problems. And now the mainstream enterprises are getting involved. It's important for us to focus on specific customer use cases and then to Josh's point, putting together a whole solution to make it as consumable as possible for those folks. The timing's really interesting for this this announcement because it kind of supports our indicators that we were pointing to earlier and then um, Rob Bearden came on from Hortonworks pointing out his data, even Gardner might be a little bit watered down, but he clearly it's crossed the chasm. Yeah. So a lot of enterprise adoptions there. Um, you guys have a lot of, a lot of product and services, Dell and the data centers, huge install base. What are they saying? Like, hey, I need to have the sync sort of integration because like that becomes, I mean, we, there's a lot of big named accounts <laughs> that have the mainframes. Yeah. And, they have, and this is like the perfect storm. We were talking to some of the IBM folks just recently about their mainframe businesses booming. You know, these large mini computers are still around. They're not going away. Right. No. So what's the impact on your business for from a customer standpoint? So I think it's huge. I think, I think the opportunity to actually focus on the customer's business problem. I mean, Dell's been in, infra in the infrastructure business for a long time. We've made some big investments in terms of software IP, services, uh, the partnership with SyncSort. Is, is critical because they bring a, a trusted, experienced solution to marketplace that solves, frankly, the, the customer problem we see most, right? As we've transitioned from sort of the early web tech days where we were heavily involved, big social media type Now that terms. you're a private company, you can tell us to sell through data. <laughs> yeah, come exactly. on, give us some numbers. We're not going there. <laughs> we should, it didn't take long <laughs> to get there. All right, come on, um, Josh, what's the numbers? I mean, <laughs> it, I mean, it must get your attention. This is a significant deal in terms of revenue, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, if you think about the, the oh, number of the customers, numbers, the, numbers, but the, the number of customers and across the breadth of segments from the smallest startup companies all the way to the largest globals, uh, the opportunities there. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll comment, you know, we came out with our DMXH um, Hadoop first ETL solution a couple of years ago, and you know, as we engaged with customers and, and saw that gain traction, you know, the number one use case was offload. And it's a perfect starting, starting point uh, for these organizations because um, you know, it does, it accomplishes so many things. It gives them a very kind of understandable way to get started with Hadoop. Uh, it, it drives cost savings or cost deferment immediately. Um, it, their teams learn how to deploy the infrastructure and manage the infrastructure and it, it, saves, uh, it saves money and, and it also populates that cluster with all the data that they need to start to get those transformational insights. So, you know, as we have seen customers adopt offload is their first use case, we've you know, built purpose, built features yeah. to make that easy. Now when you combine that with Dell's expertise and their reach, 
you know, we just think we have an unmatched solution to be able to kind of get people started on the journey to big data. Well, and you get also distribution in all the corners of the world right. now with the distribution, and you and you got platform use cases. It's right. not to do, but you got Linux and other, in fact, the mainframe covered. Yep. So you're extending your tentacles mm -hmm. of things sort into wherever environment you need to build software connectors to, right? Yeah, you know, our, our goal, we really took an approach of, you know, Hadoop is going to win. Hadoop is going to be the big data operating system, and our, go our job is to make it as easy as possible for customers to suck those expensive workloads that are running in other places into Hadoop along with the data. Yeah. And we believe that's going to be a great catalyst for you know, getting people started on that Hadoop journey. Obviously with this relationship, we're tackling data warehouse optimization, ETL offload. Yeah. We have another relationship we launched in Q4 where we've gotten our, our initial wins um, with Cognizant tackling mainframe offload, which is another uh, uh, use case that is uh, populating our pipeline more so than we thought. Yeah. Um, and, and there the savings are a, a bit more measurable and immediate because as soon as you offload those MIPS into a Hadoop environment, you start saving money that day. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we are continuing to look for those use cases that will help customers justify and give direction to their uh, you know big data ambitions. Well, and, they got to enable some analytics, right? So the key is with scale out, right? Dell has made a great run with us on the scale out commodity hardware business or industry standard. <laughs> Whatever works best for the optics, <laughs> yep. but you know that is not proprietary. That's going to be scale out. Yep. So now you guys are in a good position of software. What what I mean does things sort ultimately become a non mainframe software company? At yeah, some more, point, I mean, <laughs> more and more of our uh, use cases are you know extending beyond the mainframe yeah. for sure. Um, you know, we we have a number of customers that are, are don't have mainframes and still use us. But you know, when people want to leverage the compute that they put on the floor with Hadoop for you know um, high scale. Uh, mission critical processing, we, you know, we are the logical choice because of our expertise and because of all of the, um, you know, uh, engineering that we've done over the last decade in our core engine that we've now run, you know, directly on Hadoop. So take us through the concept with the Dell customer, um, that with SyncSort, how that would play out, and, and, and comment specifically on the challenge that we hear in the marketplace, which is, I want to unify my data. I got to have some unification on the ingest. I yep. got a lot of stuff everywhere, and you know, it could be you know Cassandra over here, uh, cluster. I got Opus Hadoop, and uh, the big mainframe in the glass house doing its business. You know, yep. Grandpa mainframe doing its thing. Okay, I got to unify it together now. So, how does that work with the Dell customers? Just take me through a, a, a use case. Yeah, so you know, we we engage with a number of customers, and we we understand their environment, we figure out, okay, if you have a mainframe, tell us about what you're trying to accomplish there, reduce costs. You have a data warehouse, is that at capacity? Yes. Would you like to avoid upgrades? Yes. Um, would you like to have a more flexible infrastructure for leveraging your data assets? Yes. What do you think that's going to be? Hadoop. You know, does it make sense to think about starting to suck the expensive workloads running on the mainframe in the warehouse into Hadoop to populate the infrastructure and also save some money? That would be great. Can you help us on the hardware piece of that? What decisions should we make? That's where I think the Dell relationship yeah, is so it. important, yeah. is that it gives the, the customer a complete end-to-end -end recipe for yeah. how do I build the right infrastructure, you know, starting at the server and going all the way up to the software layer to deliver and tackle this use case in a, in a way that um, is proven. Frankly. I think the benefit of SyncSort is, Mike, you guys got feet on the street saying, customers saying, hey, I got, I got budget to do a, <laughs> a dupe rollout. We went from POC, we kicked the tires, but now I got to factor in this new element called the mainframe, which I didn't factor into my original, you know, maybe scope, and then you know, I got more budget, I need end to end, so that's what you're getting at, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. you're getting it both ways. You're getting, you're pushing leads yep. down to Dell, yep. and Absolutely. Dell bringing business to SyncSort. Absolutely, yep. Absolutely. I mean, IT-centric use case, every customer that's got a data warehouse, has an issue of, you know, they're going to have to expand it at some point, or they got performance issues or capacity issues today, and they're a prime candidate to say, hey, let's offload some of that activity, yeah. free up that precious resource to do the really high high value analytics and BI type use cases. Mike, talk about Dell. What's going on <laughs> with Dell? So we were talking before we came on. Um, we did Dell World last year at theCUBE. Really friendly with Michael, big fan of what yep. he's done, certainly <laughs> over the years, and then taking it private, which I was a huge fan of. Um, innovation focused. What's going on inside the camp? I know people are happy because mm -hmm. everyone I talk to is like, oh man, it's great right now, it's so awesome. What's the real deal? So it is a great time to be at Dell. So I've been around Dell for the last 15 years. And uh, you know, with the privatization, with our transformation into a solutions company, you know, we're taking a little different approach where the solution has to start with a customer's business problem. 
It's no longer about build it and they will come or build it and this will solve every problem you've got. So I think we have a unique opportunity given our partnerships with folks yeah. like SingSort, given our open systems, open source based approach that's in our DNA, taking the approach of solving customer business problems, getting closer to their business yeah. problems, um, it's happening. I mean, we're I not a hardware Michael company Dell, a little tidbit. I say, hey, Michael, you know, going private, <laughs> you know, you'll have the stock options. Maybe you can give some people some stock options, but people, you know, want to get, how do you attract such good talent? He goes, John, we have so much freaking cash flow. I just pay the talent top dollar and more. And I'm like, I go, that works, right? So, I mean, so, you know, things are good over there. I mean, Dave and I were talking about on theCUBE that, you know, the business wasn't really hurting. I mean, it was really, I mean, they had thrown off a lot of cash. Yeah. So, the new transformation's there for Dell. What is the cloud story with hmm. Hadoop? I mean, is it services based? I mean, I'm still trying to get my arms around the, the cloud piece for Dell. The cloud big data piece, if you could share your, the well, vision Well, so I actually, yeah, the, there's a couple different angles on that, but I think that um, we've seen both in the HPC market as well as in the big data market, the cloud provides some flexibility for transient use cases. You can get a use case into a cluster, get it out. So I think a cloud environment provides flexibility for customers who may not be able to afford a dedicated cluster for HPC or for Hadoop, right? They can, they yeah. can have them move inside, in and out of the cloud. I mean, that's the biggest thing I see in terms of where the two are crossing paths. Yeah, yeah. I, I also think cloud is, is becoming a bigger piece of our business, and we're seeing it lower the threshold for people to take advantage of some of these big data capabilities. There was an article published um, a couple weeks ago about Dickie's Barbecue. So Dickie's I Barbecue is the, uh, is the yes. largest barbecue chain in the United States, uh, 500 locations. And you know if you look at what they're doing, they're leveraging big data, POS data, yeah. directly from stores to both manage inventories yeah. on a daily basis, um, you know, drive specials on an intraday basis, and, uh, and then also kind of manage the menu selection across all the regions. You know, their ability to do that um, is, is truly uh, given the economics of cloud. They can now yeah. build that infrastructure. You know, they're leveraging us to, they to never collect would have done that before. Data. No, it was, they would have to build a schema, understand the use case, no experimentation, and exactly and buy all the hardware, figure, oh, you know, yeah. build it to peak, etc. And uh, and they they that is such a great article because it connects the flex the business flexibility you can get if you can truly harness the power of big data. So you know we we work together with IOLAP um, and uh, and Yellowfin on that, and it's a great solution. It's a great story, and it's becoming we're seeing that. Were pattern you guys were you guys in involved on that deal? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I saw that in the press. I see yep. you guys. All right. Yep. All right, we actually yeah. highlighted that in one of our crowd pages. Came out of the crowd. Yeah, yeah. That got no, a lot we're, of the, buzz. we're the ETL layer in that uh, in that solution. All right. So, so what are the, How does that translate to corporate America? Because I think that's a real life example of this is the impact at yeah. any level of whether you're Dickie's Barbecue or Joe Department Head yeah. in so, so any there's, company. So there's a little bit of an underreported story that talks that that goes at if you dramatically lower the cost structure for analyzing data you can just ask a whole lot more questions. Mm -hmm. And I think Dickies actually does a good job of highlighting that. Um, and that's true for you know, large enterprises as well. I don't think people have a good sense of you know, the cues that they have internally to go ask questions of their data. And, and you know, what Hadoop allows customers to do is to dramatically lower that cost structure. You know, we see it in our customer, Comscore is a great example. You know, this is a company that measures internet activity globally. 20 terabytes a day ingested into a 10 petabyte Hadoop cluster. You know, that cost structure was not possible yeah. 10, 15 years ago, and Hadoop is a key component of driving the I got to ask you the question. You bring up a good point that we've been circling this around all morning. John Chambers was kind of talking about yesterday in his last keynote speech at Cisco Live, which is there, you know, he's handing the CEO job over to the new guy. And he's talking about being disrupted or being the disruptor, but you know, what you brought up is the, is, is the key thing, which is at what point does ROI become not a factor? And right now we still talk, it's like, it's almost kind of funny in a way, like that we still talk about ROI, like, yep. oh no, we should really get it. I want to see some ROI on that big right. data project. Right. At what point, Josh, in your opinion, with seeing customers, when do we stop talking about ROI? When yeah. it's so obvious yeah. so, that you so just what, have to get going. What I've seen, and our you know, dozens of customers have gotten into production deployments, is you know, once you get over the hurdle of saying, I'm going to make the investment to build the infrastructure and the skills, first of all, the marginal cost of delivering the next project goes way down. Um, second, that we've seen is it just attracts users and it attracts you know new business use cases and existing processing and new talent for the company absolutely I mean engineers and too we're like hey I'm gonna work on a new cool project what, well I was meeting with a customer last week one of our first uh, uh, Hadoop customers they they started with the traditional data warehouse optimization ETL offload 
they're saying they're going to their plan is to go from approximately 300 nodes now to 6,000 nodes over yeah. the next three years, and that's based on the demand they're seeing from their business users with new use cases coming to them. So, you know, I think once you get the infrastructure yeah. in place, once you get the skills built internally, and you have the right set of tools to uh, to execute various use cases, you know, the the demand just explodes internally, and that's what we're seeing. That's why we're focusing this solution yeah. with Dell on mm -hmm. that on ramp, which is offload. Which you know, I think a, you brought up a good, good point. I talked to a CIO friend in a big company. I won't say their name. I don't think I can disclose it, but he said they meet every year with their their key people and the worker bees in the trenches. Big offsite meeting. They write a big check. They go to a hotel. They have offsite, you know, flip chart. You know, the kumbaya, rah rah, we're great cut the server budget, consolidate. He said, he put a straw poll out and said, hey, offsite meeting or use that money to do something cool in the cloud. They all voted, do something cool in the cloud. That was actually the team building exercise in that company. So what he said was, what was interesting to your point is that the new technology attracted, it became a human resources team building exercise. At the same time, he was forging a path so he has total consensus points. So he used the cultural shift mm -hmm. to uh, yeah. get that point. So, so is that happening? That kind, of, not that particular tactic, but that kind of cultural thing happening across the enterprise. Do you see a percentage of them already there? With that, we have to get going. People are energized, or what percentage are still kind of living like, well, I'm doing my data center and you know we got the, we got stuff rolling. And so I don't talk to anybody that's not thinking about what to do. Um, I talk to a whole different range of people on how firm the ideas are um, and how informed perhaps their ideas are. Um, and I think a lot of people are still struggling with the complexity of getting started. I think that there is a, um, you know, an ever growing number of animals in the zoo, if you will, um, and making sense of that is hard. And I think that's what we're trying to do is to make it easy. We're trying to show up with customers and say, look, you can use your existing skills, you can attack a use case that will have a short payback that you can defend and sell internally, um, and it will set you up for transformational yeah. success in the future. And I think that's, you know, the, the organizations we see being most successful in getting to that tipping point, starting with that, uh, that type of use case. Mike, I got to ask you, Disruptive Solutions is a great description of, and a charter, right? You go out and have Disruptive <laughs> Solutions. But if the culture is different from company to company, is it hard to match an operational plan to go out and have deliver the solutions to customers? And how do you deal with that? I mean, you want to be yeah. bringing disruptive solutions, but at the same time, if you're too disruptive, the clients can't handle well, it. So like, you know what I'm saying, where's the balance? <laughs> totally agree, and I think the beautiful thing about this technology, and Josh hit on it earlier, is the fact that we've got some use cases that are IT oriented, that are operational, around operational efficiency, ROI, paying for themselves, so it- Reference the, architectures? Reference architectures, they help deliver on that. So it resonates with our tra that traditional minded shop. Yeah. It also prepares them without being obviously disruptive. We're solving a problem around a data warehouse in this case. Let's solve that yeah. with an ROI based traditional approach and then start building a database, you know, a new set of data that we can do analytics on that are actually going to impact the business down the road. So you give them a straight and narrow roadmap yeah, that they're and you comfortable just incrementally with. move the ball down right. the field, if you will, through the reference architectures. And I think one of our challenges collectively as a partnership is getting people to think outside of the current paradigm. You know, you no longer have to figure out what data you're going to sure. collect, how you're going to structure it, what you're going right. to use it for. Let's just start collecting the data. We'll figure out the secondary and tertiary value of that down the road. Yeah. Josh, talk about some of the success. We've got a couple of minutes left here. Sure. What's going on with SyncSort? Customers, yeah. product. Obviously, you guys have a great business model right now. Yeah. You know, I'm a big fan. I always kind of like scratch my head saying, damn, you got a great business model. Um, and yeah, trench so, mainframes uh, and now an emerging software business, which is great leverage for you guys. Yeah, so, you know, continue to see great uh, growth on the Hadoop side. Um, it, the, the, the degree to which the big data phenomenon is infecting um, the opportunities we have on the mainframe is, is quite remarkable. Uh, so we just released IronStream uh, in Q4. IronStream is a real-time data forwarder um, for mainframe log data into Splunk. Uh, we are seeing terrific success there. Um, you know, Splunk users have used that platform to great success to manage their IT operations, manage security. Um, uh, one challenge they have was they did not have a good and easy way to get mainframe log data, of which there is a lot, uh, into that platform. So we're kind of closing that gap, but that is an important step for us in that it sets up real-time data flow off the mainframe into not just Splunk, but a variety of other environments, including obviously DMXH on Hadoop. And so we're very excited about that. Um, we've got a partnership with Cognizant called Big Frame that's focused on mainframe offload. I re referenced that earlier. Um, I am shocked at the uptake that we're seeing on that solution. It is 
terrific. The, the, the analysis that Cognizant's able to do on batch workloads on mainframe to identify the offloadable workloads um, is showing terrific results, 50, 60%. Uh, we did a recent POC at a customer. We took one of 200 jobs that we had deemed offloadable, rewrote it, ran it in DMX, the, uh, or DMXH on Hadoop. The elapsed time of the job went from 90 minutes to six minutes. That MIPS, the, the CPU seconds on the mainframe, went from 100 minutes to less than, uh, less than a minute. Uh, that job in and of itself saving over $100,000 moving into Hadoop. So that's a, a great opportunity for us and we're really excited about that. I think the last thing was cloud, which we men mentioned earlier. We're doing a lot in the, uh, in the tech to make sure that we have best in class connectivity with Redshift, with S3, to make it really easy for customers to, uh, uh, to leverage that platform. And then finally, we've introduced in release eight, which just came out in Q1, an intelligent execution capability that allows customers to design once and then run that exact graph or that exact job, that data flow, in on an edge node on Linux in the Hadoop cluster, you know, in scale out fashion in the cloud. Um, and we think that's game changing capability, um, both because it gives customers flexibility, but also future proofs their environments. Um, you know, we're going to be able to let them choose what type of engine they want to use. And in fact, we believe we can make the software choose the best engine as Hadoop continues to evolve and you have new execution engines. We should be able to use the data, the job characteristics to choose whether that should be MR yeah, that's agile. or uh, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's agile. So there's a lot of really interesting uh, both tech and partnerships that we've been able to uh, you know, bring to market here the last couple of years and that'll, that'll continue. Awesome, well guys, we're short of time. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Uh, quick sound bite to end the segment, I want to get both of your perspectives. For the folks that aren't here, that are watching, or might watch the reruns, what's going on at this show? I mean, there's a lot of weirdness going on here. There's, are we slowing down? Is the tide, is there a new wave coming in? Is it, it's not, not slowing in growth, that's for sure. I mean, it's a packed house. So What's your I'll, take? Yeah, I'll give you a quick, I was staring at the board they have outside the uh, exhibit hall here that shows the entire calendar for the day. And um, I was really taken aback at the number of sessions dedicated to managing multiple workloads on a cluster. And what that says to me is, people are now not only taking advantage of the storage they put on the floor, but they're starting to take advantage, real advantage of the compute and running mission gr uh, critical workloads. And, and we believe that is going to be a, you know, that that is a real, point of uh, maturity in the market, and so I think you're going to see this start to really accelerate as people start to learn how to manage these environments and run mission critical workloads. Mike, what's your take on the show? The thing I'm seeing is over the years, we, we used to see a lot more technology companies here, and it was all technologists and engineers. Yeah. Now you're seeing the shift dramatically to the enterprise customers trying to solve yeah. problems, so it, yeah. we're in the middle of that transition. Can, it's like, you know, when you I grew up on the East Coast, it's like you can tell it's going to snow, and you just smell in the air. I mean, here, the inflection point is literally, I think, Either the bubble's going to burst or the, it'll be an inflection. I think the bubble might burst in Silicon Valley on the consumer side, but enterprise side, a lot of great stuff here. Yeah, so, guys, sure. thanks, thanks for the insight, Josh. Appreciate it, Mike. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.